so, day one of my Norway trip. This was about half an hour north of Kristiansand. I arrived at this place in the dark because my ferry arrived at 1 a.m. I really wanted to go on to finally see Norway because the weather was perfect. So I left early and I didn't have a fixed route, but that didn't matter. I just wanted to see Norway. As I said, I had no route planned out. All I did was mark a few highlights on the map, which I wanted to see, but I didn't know when I was gonna see them. So one of those highlights marked on my map was the Preikestolen. So look at those sheep. So that was the direction I was heading. After a few hours of driving, I found myself a really nice campsite. There was snow on the ground, which I found really cool, but I didn't know it then. That was not the last snow I saw. And there was a little bit of off-road driving for the Jimny. I remember sitting in front of my car while having dinner and thinking wow this is so beautiful and this is just day one. Unfortunately it was super windy at that place and on top of that I wasn't sure about how high the water would rise. so. I didn't want to get stuck in the sand on the next morning, so I packed my things and left again.
The next morning was just perfect. Blue skies, sunshine and the scenery, so beautiful. Today's destination, Breikestolen. Sometimes when camping, you can't find a good place to stay right away. So you just keep driving until you find something. This was such a day, but in the end I was very glad that I did not find something directly. The sunset and the complete silence were just beautiful. Two days later the sun was still shining. I passed the Hardanga fjord and kept on driving north. I didn't know it yet, but the day had a lot to offer.
Yeah, so let's pretend that didn't happen. The next morning, after all my stuff was dry again, I went past Eidfjord again and up to Woringsfossen. I'm afraid of heights, so this was quite adventurous. Not sure why, but I couldn't really enjoy the snow. Maybe because the day before. At the end of this tunnel there was a gate, which I found really interesting. Ah, finally, no more snow. This is the Lerdal tunnel, the longest tunnel in the world. It's about 25 kilometers long. After passing the Sonja Fjord, I was heading to Nigasbreen. This is how I imagine Alaska. If you don't want to walk, you can pay 75 crowns and take the little boat from the parking lot. Look at how blue that water is.
as I said, there was a lot of snow. Look at how tiny the chimney looks. After visiting Lohm, I found a really cool place just next to a small river. If you saw my last video, you may have noticed the change with the roof tent. Because of that I had to reorganize a little bit all the stuff that I had in the box on the roof now had to go into the chimney. That's why I have this cool foldable chair. The mountain was beautiful, but covered the sun early, then it became cold. The next destination on my list was the Geiranger Fjord, probably the most famous fjord in Norway. Once again, the ride went over mountains and valleys. It does not get boring. By the way, those were the first clouds I saw on this trip. I had not seen a single cloud. This was not the last time I saw this ship. And finally, I'm on my way to Trollstein, another highlight on my list.
suddenly it was 3 degrees Celsius. Literally, with my head in the clouds. Hey, I know that ship. After I crossed Molde, I headed towards Atlantic Road. The next day, I visited Trondheim. I went through Namsos and ended up near a place called Lund. This was one of the best campsites of the whole trip. It was a warm day I was completely alone, I could watch the sunset and it was super quiet. Every now and then you could hear a seagull, but that was it. After setting up the tent, I grabbed myself a beer, my chair and sat next to the water. And then I just enjoyed the sunset.
next morning I woke up to the sound of a car. I got out of the tent and then there was a lady. She said, I'm sorry, there are gonna be 50 people here today. They clean up the beach. I talked to her for a bit and then she told me, you have to go to an island called Leka. It's one of the most beautiful places in Norway. I'm really thankful that she gave me that advice. On the ferry, I could already tell that it's a nice place. She also told me that I have to go on top of the mountain. It was hard, a little sketchy and very hot, but it was worth it. Unfortunately, you can't just keep driving north. I mean, you can, but you won't get home and it's probably gonna be cold. So, slowly but surely, I had to decide when I was gonna turn around. I was so close to midnight sun, but yet so far. The polar circle was still about 500 kilometers away. There was no darkness at night, it was light out, but I didn't see the midnight sun. 
And after looking at the weather forecast, I had to admit to myself that I won't be able to see the midnight sun this year. There was rain, there was clouds. After two weeks of sunshine, there was rain. So once and for all, I kept on driving north for the last time. Heading to Moirana. That's so close to the polar circle, but I can't go any further. The next morning I had a quick look at Moirana and then headed to the Swedish border. I was excited to go to Sweden. I knew the weather was gonna be good and I was gonna visit the Wildmarkswegen again. After having breakfast, I headed to Wildmarkswegen. Thanks to Google Maps, I took a shortcut, which was 70 km gravel road. So this looks familiar.
because I was heading the other direction last year, everything looked a bit different. I was excited to see this waterfall again. Because of the melting snow, there was so much water coming down, it was so loud. Until today I have not had a day of rest. I have been on the road again at 10 o'clock in the morning at the latest. So I decided to enjoy the warm day and stay longer at this place. Slowly my battery in the chimney also had to charge again. But at 3 p.m. I drove on. It just didn't feel right to stay at the same location. I wanted to keep going. A few hours later, I was in Utehoktal. It was a really nice place. It was warm, the sunset was nice, I had bought meat, but there were so many mosquitoes. And because it was so warm, you had to wear shorts. I went to bed early that day. The next morning I woke up to the sound of mosquitoes. I opened my eyes and there were 20 mosquitoes inside of the tent. You won't believe me how fast I got out of that tent. So I realized I've waited so long for this. And now is my last day. Time goes by so fast. I still had one more thing to do. I wanted to hike in Fulufjellet National Park. There is a tree called Old Chico. It's supposed to be the oldest tree in the world. I mean, its roots it's, are supposed to be one of the old, I don't know. It's an old tree. I've heard that it's not easy to find. So I followed the official way 
all the way to the end. Somewhere next to the waterfall you're supposed to go up the mountain. There it is, old Chico. And with that, my journey ends. There are ups and downs, a few unplanned expenses, but overall I liked it. Noria is beautiful, the people are super friendly. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time when I travel with the Jimny.